Good morning and a very warm welcome to you on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Of course, the fourth Sunday is actually Mothering Sunday. And uh, of course, many people will be celebrating it as Mother's Day. But as we know, we call it Mothering Sunday when we remember uh, that in times gone by, people went back to their mother church. Well, we begin our service with these words from Isaiah 66. We read, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. The Lord that we come to is a God of comfort, a God who shows us true uh, motherly feelings for us, who cares for us like a mother. Well, we're going to start with our opening prayer and confession. So let's pray. Most loving and faithful God, whose kingdom endures from generation to generation, we honour your holy name and worship you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. We offer you the praise of our lips and the love in our hearts. Accept our worship in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in Psalm 130 it declares, If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Let us then seek forgiveness by the, for the sin by which we've denied God's claim upon us. Have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love. In the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offences, wash away all my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again, and strengthen me with a willing spirit. Amen. Well, the Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is God's gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Well, before our reading, just to say thank you to all those of you who came to uh, yesterday's maintenance morning. Thank you very much for all your help. Um, just say what's coming up this coming week. Uh, we have uh, a finance meeting on Monday and the Lent course continues on Wednesday. That's apart from our normal uh, activities of the uh, Hope Cafe on Tuesday mornings, uh, Wednesday communion, uh, Thursday the TOTS group, and then on Friday food bank. So uh, I hope to see you at the Lent course if you're coming along, uh, but thank you to those of you, as I say, for coming to yesterday's maintenance morning. It all helps if we can all play our part. Well, we now come to our reading and if you have a Bible, you want to open it. And the reading is John 19 and verses uh, 16b through to 27. So John 19, uh, verse 16b, second half of verse 16 through to verse 27. There we read. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. 
When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing him into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened, that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before I speak, let's pray. Most merciful God, like a mother, you feed us with yourself, with your word. Now take my words, that I may speak your truth, and so bring glory to your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if you're a parent, especially if you're a mother, maybe you may be thinking about a child today on this Mothering Sunday. Thoughts of that child may bring you joy. But also, there is the possibility that it may pierce your own soul, as Mary's soul was pierced as she saw her son crucified. As Jesus hung on the cross, Mary and the beloved disciples stood at the cross and Jesus spoke to them both. Jesus said to his mother, dear woman, here is your son. And to John, who it's thought was John, the beloved disciple, he said, here is your mother. So on this Mother in the Sunday, when we give thanks for our own mothers, whether they're still with us or not, we have a scene here, in fact, with four women and one man. So we have Jesus' own mother, Mary. We have Mary's sister. So in other words, Jesus' aunt was there. Then we have Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Madeline. Four women, three Marys. Quite confusing. But we also have one man here, the beloved disciple, probably John. And these five people all loved Jesus unconditionally. They were there at the cross at the end. Now imagine how this scene of crucifixion impacted Jesus' own mother. As she looked up at her son on the cross, I wonder whether she reflected on Jesus' life as his life ebbed away. Well, I wonder whether she thought back to the visit of the angel uh, Gabriel. The angel Gabriel who said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You'll be with child and give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and we will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. But here, as Jesus hung on the cross, it certainly felt like an ending. Her son being crucified rather than crowned. He will give him the, the throne of his father, David. I wonder if she doubted that at that point. I wonder whether Mary reflected on Jesus' birth 33 years previously, with the news of the angels to the shepherds that this was, in fact, the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah. Or the visit of the Magi, 
who came to worship Jesus and declared him to be king of the Jews. Now, hung on his cross, it also declared Jesus to be king of the Jews in three languages, Aramaic, Latin and Greek. Aramaic, the language of the common people, the Jews. Latin, the language of the Roman Empire. And Greek, the international language of the day, much like English is today. Jesus is announced to all the world by Pilate's notice. But how could Jesus be the king of the Jews? If he's being publicly executed as a common criminal, how can that be? How can he be a king and yet killed in such a way? What John is actually telling us in his gospel is that it is in fact through Jesus' execution, through his death, that his rule and reign will come, fulfilling the biblical prophecies about the suffering servant, through whose death evil would be defeated and God's kingdom would be established. I wonder, I wonder whether Mary remembered the time when she and Joseph took Jesus to the temple when he was eight days old to present him to the Lord. And they met these two elderly people, Simeon and Anna. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and described Jesus in these words. My eyes have seen your salvation. The eight-day baby was God's rescue plan, wrapped up in the arms of Mary, or at this point, in the arms of Simeon. But now as he hung on the cross, would God rescue Mary's son? No. Because in fact, God's rescue plan was in full swing as Jesus hung on the cross. God's salvation in the person of Jesus was conquering sin, although he was sinless. He was conquering death by dying on the cross. He was conquering hell by taking our punishment upon himself. Now I wonder whether Mary remembered also when Jesus was 12 years old and he went missing in Jerusalem. Jesus said to Mary when they eventually found him, didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But at that point, Mary and Joseph didn't understand what Jesus was saying to them. Jesus had been lost to Mary and Joseph for three days. Now, for another three days, Jesus would be, as it were, lost to Mary and all those who followed Jesus. Until the time when he burst forth from the tomb, raised gloriously on Easter morning. Then, of course, there was Jesus' baptism, where the father declared his love for his son and the spirit descended on him to empower him for his ministry. There on the cross was Mary's boy. And Mary had been warned that a sword would pierce her own soul. And this was the moment when that word came true. Soon enough, a spear would pierce her son's side, pierced for our transgressions, as we read about in Isaiah 53. These four women and John, but especially Mary, were in agony as Jesus hung there. These, they were in agony as Jesus hung there in agony. It's an agonizing scene. And as we remember our mothers today, or as mothers you're remembering your children, we can recall all kinds of memories. 
and I wonder whether Mary was remembering all that had happened to her son as he hung there on the cross. At the cross, we see the contrast between the gambling, brutal soldiers and the faithful devotion of Mary and the other women as they witnessed Jesus' inhumane suffering. Then Jesus said these incredible words. To Mary, he said, dear woman, here is your son. And to the beloved disciple, he said, here is your mother. His words reveal a depth of love and care for his family and friends, even as his own life was ebbing away. These words of Jesus were the kind of words that would have been used in a legal adoption at the time. And through faith in the crucified Lord Jesus, we are adopted into God's family. You know, when Joseph, Mary's husband, died, Mary became reliant on Jesus as the breadwinner of the family before he embarked on his public ministry. Well, now, as he is about to draw his last breath, Jesus is making provision for his mother. He displays his care for his beloved mother as they both pass through their darkest hour. Mary stands at the cross, not so much just as a mother, but also as a disciple. If she is to be considered a mother, now, John tells us, that she is to be considered the mother of John, the beloved. To me, this shows the limitless love of God, that while suffering for the sins of the world, Jesus could still think of others. So often when we are in pain, when we are struggling, it's all so easy not to think of others. Yes, when life's difficult, it's all too easy to become self-focused. But Jesus thinks of others as his own life ebbs away. Just as he thought of Mary, and John, so he thinks of us with the same depth of love. He still cares for his own. What an amazing saviour we have, who loves us so deeply that when we are hurting, when we are struggling, he shows us love, his love. And from that time, the gospel tells us the disciple, the beloved disciple, took Mary into his home. John would care for Mary, just as Jesus had done. In fact, Mary and John were to care for each other. Now, on this Mothering Sunday, I think there are three reactions to Mary. Firstly, we can do what some have done through the centuries and worship her. But to worship anyone or anything other than God is idolatry. Some, in ignorance of Christian belief, have even considered Mary part of the Holy Trinity. But they're wrong. She was a, a human being like you and me who chose to do God's will. So the first thing is, in our reactions to Mary, is firstly, we are not to worship her. Secondly, a second reaction that many have had is to ignore her. You know, many people, many Christians through history have ignored Mary as a reaction to those who've worshipped her. But this is also an error. Both to worship and ignore are both wrong. Mary was a woman who found favour with God, a woman whom God chose to bear the Messiah, through whom God's plan of salvation was, was revealed at the cross and the empty grave. 
So we should neither worship Mary nor ignore Mary. Thirdly, I think there is a middle ground. Neither worship nor ignore, but honour. We should honour a woman who said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. We should honour Mary for being willing to do God's will, whatever the personal cost. We honour a woman who declared, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And so we honour Mary for her, her humility before the Lord, her rejoicing in the Lord. And just as the Lord God honoured Mary by choosing her to bear his son, our Messiah, so we are to honour her. We honour Mary on this Mothering Sunday and as, as an example of faith in testing times. Her responsibility for Jesus as his mother turned out to be a great blessing for us all. So let's not worship her. Let's not ignore her. Let's honour her, just as Jesus did, as he hung on the cross. Dear woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. We worship Jesus. And we honour those whom Jesus honoured. Let's pray. Loving God, in these testing times, we thank you that at the cross, your son honoured his mother by getting her to look after John and John to look after her. Lord God, we thank you that you honoured her above all women to bear your son. And she considered herself your humble servant. May we also know ourselves to be your humble servants. And may our lives honour you now and always. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, may we walk in humility before the Lord, honouring him, worshipping him, and honouring those whom he honoured. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with everyone you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love, serve, and share the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.